Is there an accepted minimum viable product architecture for edge computing? Gregay, okay, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Um, there are a lot of edge computing projects currently ongoing. What are some of the important ones perhaps that telcos and CSPs need to be aware of and need to, need to be focused on? I think the most important ones um, are, are OpenStack, obviously. And there is a, a working group uh, under the OpenStack Foundation called the Edge Computing Group. And this working group uh, tries to uh, figure out the requirements for, for edge uh, infrastructures and collect use cases. And uh, this working group also uh, makes connections to other uh, open source communities like uh, OpenFE, where there is also an edge project, or uh, Ecorino, or Airship. I think these are the, the most important ones uh, at the moment, but the list is uh, continuously growing. Coming back to what I said earlier about this minimum viable product architecture, is there such a definition yet, and, and why do we need to be aware of this? There is a definition defined by the Edge Computing Group, and this is a, we cannot say it's an approved uh, architecture, it's just a description of what we believe that's a minimum viable product architecture for edges based on the current OpenStack capabilities. So the target here was um, to, to create an edge cloud, uh, edge cloud infrastructure uh, as soon as possible based on what we currently have and not uh, dreaming big for the first time. We are also doing this dreaming big part of the job, but that's another story. So once you've got this, this minimal viable product architecture, what is the idea then you build on it depending on which use case? Or? Because I'd imagine w w there are a lot of different use cases being identified as, as edge computing use cases and each one might have its own specific requirements. Yes, we have uh, currently around 11 uh, use cases defined in the, in the edge uh, computing group's uh, use cases wiki. And actually we have two minimum viable products uh, are detected. And these two, in my belief, uh, covers all 11 use cases, but we did not cross-check them yet. So this is a work ongoing. Actually, I'm, I'm just coming from a forum session where this need was indicated, and we will work on, on that in, in, uh, in the next month. So this is all happening as, as we speak. It's, it's still a very dynamic and, 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 and fluid environment. It is very dynamic and fluid, yes. So uh, things are happening like every day, literally. Why is OpenStack important to CSPs? Why, why, why should CSPs, especially the, the tier two, tier three CSPs, why, why should they be aware of what's happening in the OpenStack community? OpenStack became the, like the de facto standard for managing infrastructure. So the OpenStack APIs are, are, the, are the standardized uh, APIs to manage uh, uh, a cloud infrastructure. And these APIs can run either in a, in a public cloud or a private cloud, the APIs are the same. So this is why OpenStack itself is very important because the OpenStack microservices are providing the APIs and implementing the functionality uh, for the APIs. And, and OpenStack will serve this uh, in the future also when we are talking about edge clouds where we have like hundreds or even thousands of locations where we run several instances of, of these OpenStack clouds. Right, and so, so okay, so OpenStack is, is highly relevant to the edge environment. Yes. Let's look at cloud and, and um, you know, for the past five, five, six years, we've been looking at NFV and, and getting familiar with virtual network functions and what that means. Now we're starting over the past few months to talk about cloud native network functions. What exactly defines the, the, the two of them and, and do they have an impact on the open source community? Uh, there are, let's say, two kind of definitions for, for this. So one definition is when a VNF, which is, so VNF is a, like a, um, an SNFE term which is defined and, and described and we know what it is. So when a VNF contains um, a Kubernetes and, and runs the, the application in a cloud native way, then we can call that as a cloud native VNF. On the other side, uh, at CNFV, the before mentioned uh, uh, body, started to look into how to um, 
uh, build up VNFs from services which are shared between the VNFs, and, um, and they are defining an architecture for this, and that can be also called the cloud native architecture. And this second approach can affect the open source communities because um, uh, that, let's say, raises the abstraction level of, of VNFs from infrastructure as a cloud to, to platforms as a service cloud. Final question for you, going back to edge computing, as we said at the beginning, there's a lot of different projects, um, many of them very relevant to the telco community. Um, there's always lim seems to be limited developer time and focus, um, and it's spread across different, different, different projects. Might we see a point where some of these, these projects come together or there's some more harmonization between them, or will they, think they remain separate because they are very different projects? Uh, very good question. They, so they, they are separate projects now because they are focusing on to a different like, part of the problem or to a different um, layer of the stack, but they are the same in the sense that the people who are working in the different projects are the same. So for example, I myself work in the OpenStack Edge Computing uh, Group, and at the same time I'm part of the OpenFV Edge project, and I'm doing some minimal work in, in Keystone, uh, trying to help them to make the testing better. So every, every person in these specific projects uh, should, I think, do similar things so to harmonize this work between these different projects because of what you just mentioned, that we have like limited uh, amount of time uh, to make this work and we should not do the same thing twice. Excellent. Well, for now, Gergay, thanks very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.